This is La Camonce, situated near the city of Troyes in the Champagne region of France. Between the 2nd and the 8th of September 2001, the banks of Amonts will play host to the biggest carp fishing championship in the world, the World Carp Classic. The World Carp Classic was set up uh, four years ago now and uh, it was originally put together or created to, um, for, for anglers, carp anglers from all over the world to get together once a year for a festival of, uh, of carp fishing basically. And uh, why have you chosen La as this year's venue? La Camance, it's a fantastic site. Uh, I mean, the great thing about it is, um, from an organisational point of view, we can get around the majority of the lake by car, which uh, up until now we, we haven't been able to do, having used islands on previous events. There's uh, carp anglers literally from all over the world. Um, they're from Norway, Sweden, Denmark, from uh, Macedonia, all over the place. And uh, it's great to see such a diverse number of anglers from so many different countries participating. So if we can actually go out and make sure that um, everything's going to be prepared, the, the actual swims are, are just ready for them, so that when they arrive, the majority of the swims that they'll, that they'll actually be fishing have never been fished before. The marshals would spend the majority of the day clearing the swims for the imminent arrival of the anglers, who themselves were beginning to arrive in numbers at the event's headquarters. Here, they register their teams with the organisers in preparation for the draw the next day. As dusk descends over a month, the competitors get together for the pre-match party, and as always the case with carp anglers, there's an air of optimism as they look forward to the beginning of the event. Um, so. What, how do you rate your chances, really, being as it's such a Well, there's a lot of people here are going to be disappointed when they pull second prize. <laughs> <laughs> Novice or so what? Are going to win? <laughs> no, no, not at all. We've got no. as much chance as anybody else. So the fish are in front of us, as we said earlier. And it's, I say it's down to skill. All right, if we've got the fish there, it's keeping them there, getting them on the bank and getting them weighed and putting them back. And we've got as much chance as anybody else. I say the good teams are here, the best teams are here. Fish aren't in front of them, and we've got them in front of us, we'll pull them in. Yes, we're coming from Holland. Uh, we have a uh, carp shop, the only carp shop in Holland. It's a thousand square meters, and we are a team with uh, nine uh, for, uh, for nine teams. And our second sponsor is TRR. It's going to be a new company in England next year. It's going to be a mail order company. And last year it was not so good, and this time we organize a team of uh, of nine. I think we're going to win this year. So. We hope so, I think. So. When you meet foreign people, they fish different techniques, you think, oh, that's a good idea, I'll toilet back home, which is a great success. You know, you, you meet different people, learn different ideas. It's a, it's a great experience to go out and enjoy yourself. It's not just sitting at home on the same lake, you're doing the same thing. You learn a lot from going fishing these competitions. 
Yeah, I think the English are a little bit better, better fishermen than the Dutch, of course, because also uh, they invented carp fishing, or like, like the body rig. But uh, I think with the team from this year, uh, they have to be careful this year. <laughs> yeah. If we win, we win. If we don't, I've enjoyed every minute of it. It's all part of the competition. I mean, I've, I've been carp fishing for nearly 20 years, so carp fishing to me, it's progress from having fun to be too serious. So it's all about having fun at the competition for me. What I will do with the money? I'll organize, organize a big car party in Holland <laughs> and I get drunk like hell. <laughs>
and it was easy for me because I could speak in Dutch. <laughs> so you think the Dutch are going to win? Well, they are pretty serious. They did a lot of preparations. Um, and there's, of course, a team which uh, we sponsor, uh, of which I expect them to win. It really is peg-wise. I mean, if you get a bad angler in a good peg, he's got a chance of still winning it. Because this is a big lake, there's going to be areas where there's going to be no fish, maybe. There's going to be fish that roam into the area, and it's the guys that make the most of it when they come into the area. If they lose a few fish, or they've not got enough bait down there. I fancy the English mainline lads. You know, they've got super bait. They've probably come, as most mainline teams do, with loads of bait. Um, and they'll put a lot in and they'll either catch nothing because they've overdone it, only a few fish come in, or they could absolutely cane fish because they've got a superb bait and if they come on that bait, they'll stop on the bait and they'll catch a lot of fish. So, And they normally mainline lads know what they're doing. So I fancy them. If I had to put a 10 in, I'd put it on the mainline lads. And I'd always put it on English anyway, wouldn't I? <laughs> so you think the English are going to win? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, we beat the Germans 5-1 the other night, so we'll beat them all again tonight. And so to the draw itself. In contrast with previous years, competitors now have to draw two pegs and they must make a choice within 10 seconds. 10 or 13. 10 or 13. Quick, quick, quick. Five. 10. 10. Right. 10. It's nice to see so many women on a good washing day, isn't it? <laughs> okay. And your pig numbers are? Be lucky, son. 9A. 9A. 28. Or 28. Yeah. 28 or 9A. 28 or 9A. 9. We've got good down for 9. 28. 28. With the draw complete, the anglers pack up their belongings and travel to their swims which would effectively be their homes for the next four days and nights. Another new feature for this year's contest is a two hour baiting up period on the night before the competition. Between 6 and 8pm all manner of concoctions would be deposited into the lake in the hope that the carp would stick around till the next day when baited rods are cast out. Yeah, we've been using the marker floats to find out where the features are, to find out where these channels are. Um, and then we'll use the marker float to show us where they are and put the bait around it. At 9 o'clock on the 4th of September, a staggering 480 baited rods would be cast out into the lake as the horn signals the start of the World Carp Classic 2001. The lines have barely been in the water for five minutes when the rain arrives and it's here to stay for most of day one. While it may dampen the spirits of the anglers, it certainly doesn't stop some from catching fish. The Amio Pesh team of Paul Musselman and David Scales are among the first teams to see some action.
and as the rain subsides later on, they're in again with this stunning mirror car. As night draws in, the results for the first day have been calculated, which springs up a surprise package in the shape of Paul and Graham Thacker from the UK. The unknown father and son team have shot into the lead with three fish in quick succession. So with, with the fish you caught, it probably puts you in the lead, so what are your feelings about that? Uh, got gobsmacked at the moment. So we come out and there's so many big teams here and we're here just on our own. Just hope it lasts. <laughs> So how do you rate your chances? Uh, depends on tonight. Uh, we've had the most fish out during the day and this is supposed to be a night water. So if we do well tonight, then yeah, I've got a good chance. As morning arrives, reports are coming in of several fish that have been caught overnight, so it's the job of the marshals to get these catches weighed and recorded. Participants have come from far and wide this year and they all have plenty to say about the event and the lengths they've gone to to be here. None more so than Graham Noon and John Tattersall who've travelled all the way from Gibraltar. Well, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it's a long way to come anyway. We've done two and a half thousand kilometres to get here. We was about, I suppose, about an hour away from here and we had a horrendous blowout. The back wheel blew out on the Land Rover nearly tipped the car over and everything. So we were quite lucky really, we're, thank God we're here. It's, it's good with competition. It's uh, because uh, uh, all people from uh, all over the world come and it's uh, very fun to see other guys in Dutch and English and Polacks and Czechs and everyone, Croatia. And it's very fun to speak and compare uh, tackles and tactics. I love it. It's, it's great. You meet people when you first come here, the first competition in Medellin, and 
then the following year they were there and and it's just come up the comradeship of it all and everyone gets on with everybody and it's it's a great laugh it's, it's a good thing to meet anglers from different countries from all over the world and it's a chance to chat to um, pass your experiences on to other anglers and vice versa and everyone tells a fishy tale well to be honest i mean we fished we fished them all we fished both the ones at medine we come third last year at medine um I think this is a better event. I think the draw, how it is done, nobody can moan about it being fixed or anything because you're getting two tranches at the draw. Um, the Because there's no boats and water skiing, it's it's great. I mean, we're fishing places that have never been fished before, which is ideal, you know what I mean? There's there's never been, these fish around here, I've never seen rods and anglers before, so it's, it's good. I mean, it's all run smooth, a lot more smoother than before. But yeah, I'm quite happy with the way it's going, yeah. Ah oui, oui, il y a beaucoup de différences puisque ouais. celle-ci, il y a déjà la... Comment, les, euh... les compétiteurs, la différence des compétiteurs par rapport... Il y a euh... beaucoup de nations. Beaucoup de nations d'une part. Et le niveau est assez élevé euh, quand on voit les, les, les pêcheurs, les marques et tout ça qui sont représentés. Euh, nous, à notre échelle, euh, chez nous, il n'y a pas de sponsoring comme il y a là. Euh, C'est pas du tout le même niveau. A day of bitterly cold winds has meant there's been little in the way of action for the anglers. But as the sun breaks through in the early evening, there's success for one team from Holland. And what of the leaders? For the Falmouth Carpers, there's time to sit back and relax, as a fruitless 24 hours has meant that their lead has been short-lived. This is due to another surprise package over on Peg 69. Swedish anglers Martin Wilstrand and Gert Samuelsson have stormed into the lead with these three fantastic fish of 16.2, 15.7 and 11.95 kilos respectively. Yeah, it um, felt very good. We were, uh, we was not thinking we we're gonna be in the lead, but when we when we draw the peg 69, we we thought that maybe we can get some fish. But we didn't thought that we be leading for the first day. But we have um, three good fish the first night. That it was good. <laughs> Night brings a full moon to a month, and while some fishermen may regard this as a bad sign, it clearly hasn't stopped others from catching. Um, we just uh, caught our uh, second fish one hour ago. It was uh, so 12.9 uh, kilograms, so it's about 26 uh, English pounds. What we do, we saw uh, how much they um, baited up the area over here. So we we fished with uh, with four rods, only with single bait hooking, only dropped uh, about a. Few. About a four, 500 bolis uh, in an area of 300 meters. And on the left rod. Um, uh, Baz Rolsema from Holland wasn't the only one to catch that night, and Dawn brings more reports of fish that need to be weighed in.
More cold winds and rain moved in during the day to hamper the efforts of the carpers, and by early evening there'd been little in the way of action. But this was all about to change dramatically. Close by on Peg 65 there was another screaming take, and Lennart Gamelsrud from Norway was into another Amont's cracker. A sudden rise in temperature had spurred the fish into a feeding frenzy that would last well into the night, and many other teams were reaping the benefits. Thank you. 
Happy Chappy. Having called the marshals to their swim to weigh in two more sacked fish, Thierry Stunnenberg and Richard Bradenbeck were having more action than they could handle as a rod screamed off again. Minutes later, it was the Brits who stole the limelight in a big way, as Barry Mann and Sam Oakley brought ashore a monster in the shape of this magnificent 46-pound mirror carp, the biggest fish caught so far. In the meantime, the Dutch team on Peg 62 had been amongst the fish again, not just once, but twice, and they weren't the only ones in the section who were catching. seemed impossible, but it was true. No sooner had the marshals left Peg 62 to weigh in other anglers' catches, they were called back again. But there wasn't even time to get this fish out of the sack, as there was yet another screaming run for the seemingly unstoppable Dutch team.
After a night of almost constant action, it was no surprise that the daytime was quiet in comparison. With the anglers given a reprieve, it was time to reflect on the amazing events of the previous night, and it was clear that there were some very happy people out there. I'm the, one of the main sponsors, it's GB Bates and myself, we, we've done this as a joint event. We did it as a joint event last year and we actually came away, we practically swept the board apart from the biggest fish and this year my lads here have caught me the biggest fish so I'm very well pleased with things, very well pleased. Yeah, Gary's been a huge help, um, terrific rods as you probably know. Um, yeah, we're here again to defend our title. Okay, we may not get the top prize again, but the lads have done very well. So what would it mean for you if you were to win the biggest fish? Um, it would just put the icing on the cake, basically. We did it, most of them, we did the section last year, the team prize, the main prize, and now we've got the biggest fish. So that would just be the icing on the cake, terrific. From the international point of view, I think it's terrific. It really is to see um, Swiss and Gibraltarians. There's everybody here. Absolutely amazing, really, to see all the other nationalities competing on equal terms with um, the Brits who are so far ahead with, with all this kind of thing. But it is really good that, that it's become such an international event and I'm very proud to be part of it. The lull in action also provided the opportunity for Richard Taylor from the Partridge team to buoy the spirits of fellow anglers in his section as he delivered bags of new products from Partridge Hi, Hi, which every competitor right, would receive. Got some goodies from Partridge for you. Oh, well done. Oh, These included innovations such as new buoyant tiger nuts and sweet corn, with the former having accounted for a British record earlier in the year. I'm quite happy in what we've got in here. Well, there's some uh, hooks in there that are more suitable for the UK. Yeah. There's the um, Z15s in there, and then oh, those are you've got just about artificial tiger nuts. Are you using tigers? Yeah, oh, I've good. been using tigers. I've been messing about with cork, which takes a lot of uh, trimming down and That's cutting it, yeah. down. Like. Well, those are really buoyant. They look quite good, don't they, John? Exactly you the use a large one over the top of a few tigers, that'll pop up a size 2 hook. Yeah, well, I'm very, just about to tie buoyant. a tiger rig up, so I'll give them a try. <laughs> There would also be a set of exclusively made pocket scales for each competitor, provided by the main event sponsor, Ruben Heaton. Ces ballons sont vus dans cet événement. Je trouve que c'est bien parce que ce qui est très pratique déjà, c'est que c'est petit. Oui. Et puis donc ça tient très facilement dans une poche. Oui. Et puis donc étant donné que c'est gradué, je dirais, de manière intéressante jusqu'à 14 kg, donc ça correspond déjà à un nombre de poissons important. Oui. Donc finalement, on va l'utiliser très facilement et souvent. All the scales used by the marshals during the World Cup Classic were a new exclusive from Reuben Heaton, a version of the popular specimen hunter scale developed especially for the competition. We're using a special version of the scale for the competition itself, for the weighing in. These are semi-transparent scales, so we can keep a record of the numbers of the scales and which marshals have which scales, um, again in kilos. With Thierry Stunnenberg and Richard Bradenbeck clearly out in front, they were in buoyant spirits, and other members of the Fisherman's World team who hadn't been quite as successful came down to spend the final night on Peg 62 in support of their fellow countrymen. And while it was all quiet on the fish frontier, elsewhere there were others having more nocturnal successes. Keeping with their teammates on Peg 62, another Fisherman's World pair weren't content in weighing in just one fish, and repeated their compatriots feat of catching two at the same time.
on the peg next door, there was success for the Brits, with Richard Ivers and Richard Lubbock banking this superb mirror. One team refusing to give up the chase were Norwegian pair Lennart Gamelsrud and Terj Bratland on peg 65, who were gaining ground with another capture to boost their tally. But this wouldn't worry the leaders on peg 62, who continued their amazing run of fish with yet more nighttime action. It was the final morning of the World Cup Classic 2001 and in a few hours the tournament would be over. Nevertheless, there was still time for some last minute fish to be weighed in. Swede Martin Wilstrand rounded off his team's tournament in style with his 42 pound cracker. Of course, it was no surprise to see that Thierry Stunnenberg and Richard Bradenbeck's insatiable appetite for fish hadn't abated in the slightest, and they rounded off the World Carp Classic 2001 with this their 18th and final fish. Surely now their crowning as runaway champions was inevitable.
Jezus. Jezus. Zo. Ah. Ben je nou het water in of waar je wacht? Veel te koud. Ik <laughs> John! Uh, our great John, marshal. come here. John, get, get our great marshal. That's the one. Right. That's the one. <laughs> Don't like beer. No, no, no. no much. No.
God, tell me how you're feeling at the moment. Oh, great. I feel like I'm going to explode. Something. I don't know. Everything going in, going out. I don't know. My head's like this big. Great. Absolutely great. <laughs> First time Dutch guys win. Yeah. <laughs> d d did you ever expect this when you came to the competition? Uh, no, we uh, expect a team prize, but this not. It's uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so at what stage of the competition did you th think that it, this might be your year? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We st uh, the first night was a bit slow. We caught some. Uh, the next morning we heard we were only eight, eight, eight kilos trailing. So we went for it and uh, we had a night of 11 takes, 11 fish. And we lost nine. So we knew then this, this was it. We knew absolutely then the second night we knew we we're going to win this thing. So <laughs> great. The, le the, the last two nights I didn't sleep. I sit on uh, uh, after my rods for the fish. It was uh, not normal. He's still dreaming. Yeah. <laughs> He's still dreaming. <laughs> With regards to the event overall, do you think it's it's good for the future of carp fishing? Yeah, I think. Yeah, especially yeah. for Dutch carp fishing. I feel we're a bit uh, uh, underestimated. Yeah. We're going great in Holland. We, we're doing great things. So watch out, guys. Here we come. <laughs> uh, are you going to be back to defend your title next year? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's the boss, he says yeah, yes, yeah, we'll be back, yeah, we'll, be back. <laughs> we'll be back, same team, same place, yeah. same hopefully same price, <laughs> hopefully same pack, whatever, we're just going to do it again. <laughs> the lads who won it, you've got to, that, are you looking over there now, looking at their faces, that's how I felt last year, and bloody good angling, well done, you know, you kind of, the feeling of what they're feeling now, I know it, from last year, brilliant, pucker. I wish I was in their shoes again. <laughs> What more can I say? <laughs> Brilliant. Come on, oh, no! It's uh, been uh, interesting. I think uh, I think there's been more fish caught more than uh, in any event that, uh, that, that's been previously run. There's ne been nearly a tonne of carp caught, which by anybody's standards is an awful lot. Um, I think the venue itself has, uh, has been very well received and uh, I think it's, uh, this is certainly a very good spot for the, the, the event to be held. Uh, this event I think will go from strength to strength without a doubt. I think it's quite well organised and there's a lot of support for it and people who are here are saying, even marshals are saying, Well, we're going to come back and fish it next year. It is that much of a challenge. And I think it is actually the challenge of the thing that is what drives guys to keep coming to events like this and fishing them against tremendous odds because it's a hundred to one, really, that you actually come away with, with a prize. Yeah, the European matches, I mean, it's opening up Europe for British companies as well. You know, it's a carp fishing spreading. This is the way forward, yeah. Do, you know, if you choose not to fish them, down at you, if you choose to fish them, it's up to you, everyone wants different things, but this is a good thing. So do you, you think it's got a pretty healthy future then? Oh God, yeah, definitely so, and I'll be back for more of them, they're a good laugh, you know. Loads of different people, loads of countries, it's nice, you know, everyone gets on, makes a change, doesn't it, and everyone being at war or something, isn't it? but yeah, they are, they've got a place in the future of fishing, as far as I'm concerned, definitely. We can have our own uh, ladies competition, um, it would be nice to have that within the main one. But uh, no, fingers crossed, hope it'll all be okay next year. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, having said that, I don't particularly mind not having the ladies separate. I'm, I'm happy to go all in, but it would be nice to have a, a spin-off, if you like. If, I think they've had them in the past, haven't they? Uh, a, a small ladies competition within it. So, yeah, I'll be back if they ask me, certainly. It's a very exciting stage really now, because now the event has gone from its infancy, really, uh, from the original concept. Um, it's got, I mean, with the, with the following uh, that, that it's got from the carp world and carp anglers uh, as a whole, I think it's got a very bright future. There's, there's lots of things that, that through actually bringing the event to La Camance, um, it, it's able to, we're able to develop and grow it from here. And I think one of the things that we're, we're keen to do is to establish a committee that will come down and organise all the pegging uh, for us, which will make certainly our job easier anyway. Okay, can you tell us all about last night when you caught the big one? Yeah, it was cold. Push the camera. Whoa. 
<laughs> we now have our breakfast, what was given to us early this morning. The trouble is it's still alive and not cooked. So um what sort of tactics were you using at the time? Bite out in the water. What other tactic is there? Come on lads! Think, come on! Who's your daddy? Oh, there's nothing to that, really, was there? Well, we're back with Peg 40 again. It's now 3 o'clock. The alarms have just gone off again. And it's Paul's hit. What colour rod was it, Paul? Green. What colour rod was it? Not even touch the <laughs> me, you never even scoop the Come on, blue. Alright. 